Hey guys, it's Chrissy Washington back again today with another recipe for you guys. This is a good one, guys. I know they're all good, but <laughs> this one is really good. Let me give you a little backstory on this. So recently the kids have been saying to me, uh, would you rather? They have all these would you rather situations. They give me, would you rather be able to walk through walls or would you rather be able to fly? Would you rather eat spaghetti for the rest of your life or have dessert for the rest of your life? All these would you rathers. What would What is your favorite food? Would you rather eat that or this? And I can't really decide usually. I usually say, I don't know. I usually say I can't decide because there's so many options. But today I'm deciding because if I had to pick one meal, one particular food, I would say my favorite is seafood out of all the different types of food. And if I were to say, what is my favorite seafood meal out of all the seafood meals that I've had and that I loved, it would be this one. I can eat this breakfast, lunch, dinner. I can eat this summer, winter, spring, fall. Um, it doesn't matter. This is one of my favorites. And this is what I'm making today. It is fried fish, whole fish with coleslaw and sliced tomatoes. Sounds very simple. It is pretty simple, um, but the way I do it is my favorite and I'm going to show you today. So first thing first, I have some fish here. These are fresh croaker from straight from the fish market and um, they just slice them down the back with the head on. Head on is key for me. Um, you get that flavor and it kind of adds to the experience of eating the fish whole. Um, and so I got that clean there. If you want to go over it some, this is what I do when I get home just to make sure because I like to eat the skin. Everybody in my house it's the skin on the fish. So if you see, this is what it looks like. They're a nice size, croakers. This is one of my favorites. It's a nice fresh fish. Another thing I love about living here in the low country, the seafood is always fresh right outside the door. Um, and it's always in season, some type of fish. So right now it's croakers, whiting, spots, um, shrimp is in season for most of the year around here. So today it's croakers. And so if you find a few scales after you have it cleaned, what I do is take a fork and I just run the opposite way of the scales. And then if you find any extra little scales like that one right there, um, they'll just come off that way. So that's the fish. I've already done this for the most part, so it's ready to go. But I also like my coleslaw to be cold when I eat it. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is slice up the cabbage for my coleslaw. So let me grab that. So this is one head of cabbage. Don't be afraid of a whole head of cabbage. It's always better when you get the fresh cabbage and slice it up yourself because you can know exactly how fresh it is and you can determine how big or small you want the pieces cut up. First thing I do is cut off the end of the cabbage. And this is um, the end. This is what it looks like. If you remember, here is what it looks like when it starts to grow. So you just put this in right here in the water and then these shoots grow up and then you can plant it. So I'll save this for later. Right now I'll take the knife, cut the cabbage in half, half of a cabbage. If you see there is this middle core right here. So I'm going to cut this way and cut this way and slice that out. So once that's out, 
You can slice however you need to in order to get the cut that you want. So I usually cut in half again and then really thin. I like really thin coleslaw because I like a really easy, clean bite to it. So and you just go whatever direction most of the leaves are going in. If you want, you can use a shredder and just do it that way. I like to do it by hand. I don't know why, but <laughs> I do. So that's what I'm doing right here. It'll take a minute, but I like it better. I don't like it too thin. I don't like it too thick. So I cut my own. If you see, this is the texture. Okay, so a few minutes later, this is our cabbage all sliced up. I'm going to wash my cabbage in bath of vinegar, apple cider vinegar and salt. That's what I wash all my fruits and veggies in when I bring them home. So I'm just going to put them in this bath, let them soak for a few minutes, put some salt in them, rub that around. If you need more coleslaw than that, have at it. I think I'm gonna chop the rest of this because I'm hungry. Okay, so this is going to soak for a few minutes. Just going to rinse off any little particles of dust and dirt and sand that might be in there. Kind of rub your fingers through it. This is kind of therapeutic too. FYI, I just cut my finger, so. <laughs> okay guys, I'm back. I've got a bandaid on my finger. I'm good to go. I'm not bleeding over the food. But now I'm going to do the second part of my veggies for this meal, and that is the tomatoes. So, got a couple tomatoes here. These are not, unfortunately, they're not from my garden, but these are pretty good, pretty fresh from the farm tomatoes. So I'm gonna slice these up, pretty simple. Um, I just cut them in half, slice out the little middle part. You don't need that for that. To about bite-sized pieces into the bowl. Okay, so we just sliced up some tomatoes. I told you this would be really simple and it is. Take a little salt, sprinkle it, a few more seasonings. Mrs. Dash Original, I use this on just about everything. It has dried onion, spices, black pepper, parsley, celery seed, basil, margarine, oregano, bay, savory thyme, mustard, cumin, rosemary, cayenne, pepper, coriander, dried garlic, dried carrots, dried orange peel, dried tomato, lemon juice powder, citric acid, oil of lemon. It goes really good with lots of lots of stuff. So I just sprinkle this on for a little bit more flavor. Lemon juice. Roll your lemon to get the juices out of it. 
slice it in half. Drizzle of good olive oil. Today I'm using this one, the California olive oil. Just drizzle it and that's it. I let those sit out. If you want a little bit of more flavor, I've got some cilantro. You can sprinkle some cilantro on there. Make it pretty. There you go. Okay, so I let that sit out because I like my tomatoes room temperature. Now we're going to work on this coleslaw. This is all our cabbage. Just run this under some water to rinse it off. Okay, this has been drained, clean, drained, and it's ready to season. So again, very simple seasoning. I'm gonna show you guys my salt bag. So I'm gonna dig into my salt bag, get a nice sprinkling of salt. The thing about coleslaw is it needs lots of salt because that's the main flavor, seasoning. more Mrs. Dash. Sugar. I put a couple of teaspoons of sugar into my coleslaw. Apple cider vinegar. I kind of eye it. You can always add more. Little mayo, little mayo. I don't like very soggy, mayo-y coleslaw, but you do need something to kind of help bring everything together. So I'd say about a tablespoon. Okay, if you see the liquid, it's just it's just getting a little bit white, the liquid. It's not gonna taste. Perch perfect. Perfect, perfect. The only thing I want to add at the end it's a little cilantro. This is fresh cilantro. I'm just gonna chop up some. I like the fresh taste. Ah, oh, look at that, so good. Fresh, tangy, little bit tart, little bit sweet. Lots of flavor, really clean, crisp, fresh coleslaw. Okay, so now that that's all done, we're going to start on the main attraction, the fish. So again, I just cleaned the fish, just rinsed it off. It's already been cleaned um, and it's ready to go. This unfortunately is not fresh croaker. The croakers that they had that were fresh were really small. They were about like that. So you can't get really much of anything off of that. So I opted for frozen. But because this is my fish place 
and I know the quality. I know it was frozen um, at the peak of freshness and it's really good. So, and I've had it before, so it's delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my breading for this. Now, I'm gonna show you what I'm using today for breading. This is my breading. It's a fish breader, it's from Seagull. That's where I get my fish from. Usually they have the biggest selection around here. Um, and this just has yellow corn meal, yellow corn flour, salt, MSG, onion powder, garlic powder, spices, and citric acid. It's gluten-free. It has no wheat or flour in there. So this is my favorite one to use. It's perfectly seasoned. If you have a perfectly seasoned breading that you like to use, use that one. This is my go-to. If I don't have this, I usually make my own. This is stone ground cornmeal. This is a white cornmeal. I'm going to open it up so you guys can see. That's what it looks like. Pretty fine grain on it. Um, and this is another good, really good flour if you want to use that. This is cornmeal. This is a yellow cornmeal. And if you see, this one is not as fine because it's more grainy than the other one. So you can mix those two. I also have another seafood seasoning. Whatever you have that you like the flavor of that has a nice seafood flavor, Old Bay, Zatarans, whatever it is, use that. Um, I like corn flour, but you can use wheat flour if that's what you prefer. And this is what we're doing today. Okay, so I've cleaned up a little bit. I hate a dirty kitchen, so I had to get rid of all that other mess. Now we're gonna get down to business. I've got my fish, my croakers, and I see a few more scales. You see in the places like right around here, that's where they tend to miss them. And that's that good meat. Like you don't wanna miss out on that because of scales. So you see a few of those, just pick them off or Use a fork and try to get it off. Okay, so I've got my fish head on. Split down the back. And the thing about that I like about this cut is that you can get a filet on this side. That's with the no bones. And this side has the bone, so you can kind of pick out the bones if you want that side, or you can kind of get that side, but you still get the whole fish on there. So just put it down on the flour, corn flour in this case, and then turn it over. Just give it a pat. I don't like it heavily breaded um, because that's what the oil sticks to. So you just kind of give it a little pat pat and then slide it to the side and then go into the next one. I usually have a couple of these breaded at one time, not too many because then the breading starts to stick and then it gets clumpy and then it's a big goop of breading on your fish and I like to taste the fish. So that's it, lightly breaded, not completely drenched, but just enough. Okay, so we've got the pan behind us. Nice thick metal pan. And I've got the heat on medium high heat because again, we're frying fish. We don't want it to fry long time. We just want it to fry enough so that it's done and golden and crispy. So I like to fry with peanut oil. This has been a game changer for me for frying fish and chicken and things that don't want, you don't want it to get too crispy black on the outside, but you want it to cook all the way through. Peanut oil, just like you would with a turkey or something that needs a long frying time. It's, it has a very high heat threshold. 
so you can use things um, cook for a long period of time and it won't burn so that's what I'm putting in the pan not too much just like probably like a quarter inch So we'll give that a couple minutes to heat up and then we're gonna add the fish. Cheers. A good trick to see if your oil's ready, put a little bit of water on your hands, throw it in the pan, and if you hear that popping, Almost ready, not quite, almost. The faster it pops, the higher the heat. It's still kind of slow, so that lets me know it's not really that heated up yet. Okay, I'm gonna test it out. Starting with the tail, you put the tail in, in and see how it does. So it bubbled pretty well on the tail, so that means it's ready. So I open it up. I start skin side down in the pan. Sometimes I like to move it around, make sure the skin isn't sticking to the bottom of the pan because I want everything to be intact. That's how I like to eat it. So it's got a nice golden brown color on the back, on the skin side, so we just turn it over.
Now this. 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 It's my favorite, favorite, favorite meal. Probably of all time. If I had to pick one, it would be this one. Fresh fish. Fresh tomatoes off the farm. Fresh coleslaw. Freshly made. My favorite meal. This meal is delicious, dare I say nutritious, and again, you can eat it all year round. Summer, spring, winter, fall, delicious. I'm going to dive in. That's nice. Crispy. This is the filet side right here. You can get just a good, nice, crispy piece of fish. Mm -hmm. So good. Then we gotta get a bite of the coleslaw and some of that fresh cilantro. And don't forget the tomato. Mm. A plus. So fulfilling. So easy. You can definitely make this if it's a meal for one in 30 minutes or less. Any day of the week. There you have it, my favorite meal. Thanks for watching, bye.